and I'm singing Queens like Iron Maiden, I'm trying to sound like they sound. So certainly, I think we all wear our influences on our sleeve to a degree, but then you start kind of doing things your own way, and it kind of morphs into something else, and then my real high screams I used to try to get from Halford. And then when I started hearing the Midnight stuff, it was like, wow, how, you know, how did I not hear this before? Because his range was higher than anybody's I'd ever heard. Yes, and, and sounded the best. It, it sounded yeah. the best. Yeah, and yeah. Midnight's, you know, Midnight's ability to convey emotion was, like, unparalleled. I mean, it was. I, love, I love singers that can really express themselves with such passion and expression and, and, and feeling. And uh, mm-hmm. I thought Midnight was one of the tops of all time to be able to do that. That's yeah. the most Todd, important thing. And Todd has learned a lot of that now, listening to Crimson Glory and Midnight singing, he's learning that too as well. So I'm sure, like, like Todd says, if you take Bruce Dickinson and Jeff Tate and, and Midnight, Tate, <laughs> Midnight and, and, and Al burned him into it, yeah, and blend these guys into the singer, you're getting the Todd Latore, which is, and if he's, if he's any, as good as any one of those four, you know, then he should, he should be considered great. Okay, so John, is the band currently writing material for a new album then? Yes, we are. Okay, great. And Todd, do you expect to have input in the band besides the lyrics? Well, certainly. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's probably something that may be misunderstood. Um, t- kind of touching back on the point that John made about the friendship being a, 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 you know, kind of family in the band versus just a, high, a quote, hired singer. Um, you know, because of my drumming ability, um, it helps me with vocal phrasing, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, with the rhythm. Um, you know, if Jeff is working on a part, you know, I'll be tapping my hands or feet, or Dana will have, you know, an idea about something, and it's kind of fun for us to, to talk drums together. Um, you know, that we kind of joke around a lot at practice about, about drumming. Um, and also I play guitar. So, oh. yeah, I'm a, more of a rhythm guitar player and, and, and use it as a songwriting tool. But even when John is doing something, I'll hear a harmony or, you know, I'll say, hey, try to, try to pick it this way. And if it fits, certainly my ideas are considered and implemented if that's the best choice. But, um, I, I've been given, Honestly, complete creative freedom um, to experiment and, and bring my ideas to the table. I have my own recording studio at home, so we get together here and write things and have ideas and progress is being made. You know, we're not we're not going to rush this record. I know the fans are dying for a record now, mm-hmm. but we're not going to rush it. This this needs to be. You know this this is going to be. Um, You know, we want this record to be equal to or greater than Transcendence, which is really the the coveted and glory album. That was, mm-hmm. you know, that was their their best record. Even would say that. Well, um, you know, I, well, one of the things I try to say, you know, with Todd, I, I encourage him. I wanted to encourage him to be a write to be a writer because I don't like singers that can't write. I mean, I hate having to dictate to a, a, a vocalist mm-hmm. what line to sing, what melody to sing, what harmony to sing. Then, then it's not, it's not really true. It's not coming from the singer's heart. You need a singer that's a, a true songwriter. And there are a lot, believe it or not, there are many singers out there that just are not good songwriters. You know, and in order, to, I think it's important to know that that's one of the reasons why also I was so happy with Todd that he could, he is a songwriter, and he, he does bring a lot more to the table than just a voice. And I, yeah. I need that interaction with Midnight. I was able to interact. I, I need somebody I can interact with that can write. And, I want and I'm to open to to John saying, "Hey, sing it this way. Try this." Now, I'm not yeah. one of these guys that's saying, hey, screw you, this is the way I sing, I'm doing it my way. I'm totally open to experimenting with all different kinds of things. Yeah, And I'm a, knows, I'm a yeah. versatile singer, so I have fun doing that anyway. If anybody, if you, anybody who knows me knows that I want to try it every way. I want to I hear it one way, I want to hear it an opposite way, I want to hear it in a different way. I, I'm, all open, I'm totally open to trying things in every way possible, in every way imaginable. You know, I love the, the ability to change and express things differently and, and experiment. I love the experimentation in songwriting, in the songwriting process. Like the very first song that we wrote, ever wrote together, Todd and myself, all I really provided to him was just a, a musical composition of, of guitar, you know, the guitar parts. He actually helped me put down the drum parts over it, and then I left him the music, and he just put down all the vocal parts himself. 
I didn't want to influence him one bit because I wanted to find out what does he truly sound like on his own without my influence. I did not want to influence him. I wanted to know what he was doing on his own. And what he came back with was really impressive. It wasn't what I expected. It was different, but very impressive. And so that became the part that began the process of, of uh, you know, letting go a little bit and being able to trust the other person a little bit that mm-hmm. they, they can write. And so it's kind of fun because now I, I know that he's going to come to me with ideas that are good. Whether they're the right or not, it doesn't matter. It's just I know he's going to be coming to me with good ideas. Yeah. That was really important to know beforehand. Before I would ever say, I'm going to write an album with you or you're a member of the band, I have to know that you that you are on the same page and that you're in the same realm and the same universe that I am right now as far as songwriting goes. And Todd, mm-hmm. is, Todd is. Okay, great. Right. Right. When the fans can expect that album? Next year, in 2012? Right now, yeah, we're, pl- we're planning on releasing it at the end of next year. So probably the winter, the fall winter of 2011. It's going to be the 25th anniversary of the band, so we really want to have the album come out on the anniversary. Okay, great, great. And do you plan to do more shows besides the Pathfinder one that we, we already talked about? Yeah, we have multiple shows already booked in Europe. We have shows booked in Germany in Holland, in Belgium, in Norway, I think Sweden now, we're talking to Spain, Italy, and Greece. So next year, I think we're going to be doing a, a, some of the, you know, we have the Cape True Festival, we have the Carmageddon Festival, we're talking about doing the Bang Your Head Festival, some of the other festivals in Italy and Greece. So yeah, so next spring and summer, we want to do a lot of shows next year in remembrance of the 25th anniversary of Crimson Glory. We're going to be playing all the old classic songs with Todd. And then we'll go in the studio and, and release the album later that year. Okay, great. Are you are you ready for that task, Todd? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been ready. I've, I've dreamt about this since I was 13 years old. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally ready to do it. The band is ready. Um, the fans want it. I mean, it, it, just the timing. You, you, can't, you can't make this shit up. This is just... This is all unfolding on its own. We're not forcing the issue. Right. It's just, it's, you know, we're having fun, which is really what we, what it's, that's why we got into music in the first place, to have mm-hmm. fun. It's something that's in your blood, it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, we're not going to do it. But right. it feels good, so we're the doing time, it. Like, like, Todd, like Todd mentioned, the timing's right. We, we, it, just, it just worked out that we're having our 25th anniversary. Mm-hmm. That midnight passed away recently, and that we discovered Todd two weeks after midnight passed away. I mean, it was just it was just a synchronicity. It was just like written in the in the stars to happen. You know, I mean, I could never imagine finding a replacement for midnight two weeks after he passed away with somebody that lives in my own backyard that was born in the same hospital that midnight passed away in. I mean, it's just written in the stars. Okay. Well, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. We wish you the best. Any final words you. you would like to share? Go ahead, Todd. Uh, well, I just want to say to to all the listeners out there, um, I'd like to thank everyone for embracing me and for your support. Um, you know, this is an awesome band. We've got a lot of great work ahead of us to do. And, um, you know, we hope that they enjoy it as much as, as we are right now. So I would really like to just thank everyone for for their support. Yeah, and, and I also would like to say, you know, how much I appreciate the, the fan support over the last 25 years. Our fans have been wonderful to us, and they've helped keep our spirit alive, the legacy of Crimson Glory alive. You know, they've helped to make Crimson Glory and what we are today. And we have a great challenge ahead of us to, to continue the band, and we're definitely looking forward to it. We're up for it, and we hope that we can go another 25 years. That would be really something else. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great guys. Thanks again. Long live Midnight and long live Crimson Glory. Metalhead, those were John and Todd from Crimson Glory. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Keep metal.